Good morning. Happy Sabbath. <clears throat> um, the title of my sermon today is Be Prepared, okay? Um, let's just have a quick word of prayer. And dear Lord, even at creation, you had thought in your mind before you even said, let there be light, that you needed light to see what else you could create, Lord. And we know that you are a God of preparedness, that you put thought into your plans. Um, we see it in the plan of redemption, Lord. So we ask that as we go into your word and we're learning about being prepared, Lord, that you prepare us and that you help us to be more like you, um, the God of preparedness. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. A story tells of two farmers, both with religious backgrounds. They lived in the midst of a drought. Both decided to look to God and professed to put their plants and their land and their plants and their land in his hands. However, only one farmer tilled his ground, put fertilizer on it. And when the rain came and when the rain fell, and it did fall because they had both prayed for it, only one farmer was prepared. The Boy Scouts motto is simple, be prepared. But the deeper meaning of being prepared is being prepared in mind and body and being able to make the right decision at the right moment. Amen. The Pathfinders motto, amen, praise the Lord for the Pathfinders, is the love of Christ compels us. And if you take nothing else from this today, take the blended models of be prepared and the love of Christ compares, uh, compels us to the love of Christ should compel us to be prepared. Amen. Amen. The parables of the 10 virgins illustrates this point. Uh, let's turn to Matthew 25, one through 12. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. So here we see that all of them had a knowledge of the bridegroom, who represents Jesus. All of them were looking forward to the bridegroom's coming. And all of them had believed they had a relationship with the bridegroom. Okay, because you can't look forward to someone's coming unless you have a relationship with them. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. So then that's very important because God doesn't waste his words. Some had more wisdom than others. And then in the next verse, it shows you what qualifies them having more wisdom than others. Verse three, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. So some brought lamps with no oil which means that they had the appearance that they had light. They had the appearance that they had the material to make a fire and to light their path, but really they had no oil. So um, I wanna ask a real simple question. How can you have light without oil? Okay, that shows in how they're foolish. Okay. Verse four, I'm gonna read it again. Verse five, uh, verse four. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. So verse five, all were waiting for the bridegroom, but not all were preparing. And all of them were asleep, but not all were ready for the call, okay? And verse six, and at midnight there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him, okay? Verse seven, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. So if any, if any of you guys don't know what the process of trimming your lamp is, um, it's actually cutting off the burnt part so that your fire can uh, be renewed, so that you can start your fire new. So actually what that can mean to signify is that even though they're asleep, even though they may not have been prepared, because they were preparing when the call came, their fire was ready to burn and their fire was burning. And um, if you look at the Psalms of David, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, that only um, shows you how far you can go in front of you. It's only like a couple, a couple feet in front of you, which illustrates your path. And a, 
A bunch of those lights together, however, can be able to light the way for the whole party of the bridegroom. Amen? Amen. Amen. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered saying, not so, lest there not be enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. So actually I want to present a theory to you. Maybe, maybe it wasn't even that the, the foolish didn't have any oil. Maybe it was more so that they had oil, but they let their lamps burn out because they didn't have enough oil. Okay, and then they asked the wise, can I have some of your oil? And this comes to signify that no one can have your relationship with Christ. You can't go off of your mother's relationship with Christ. You can't go off of your father's relationship with Christ. You must have your own relationship with Christ and only that will carry you and help you to be prepared. Amen? Back to the scripture. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, come to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. And um, this is actually a very solemn message. Eventually it will be too late. Not only for us who have a knowledge of God, but for those who have chosen to reject his love and mercy, okay? So I just want to highlight three points that we can get from this. To be prepared, you must always be preparing. It's a real simple, real simple point. To be prepared, you must always be preparing. In Pathfinders, they teach you to tie different knots. They teach you how to set up your different tents. And the only way that you can be prepared to act in every situation is that if, if you have been taught how to act in every situation, if you have been prepared to act in every situation. And the love of Christ compels us to be prepared. Amen? And that love also prepares us. It compels us and it prepares us. Amen? Point number two. Knowing someone is not enough, as you see in the, um, in the example of the five foolish versions. They all knew that the bridegroom was coming. They had a knowledge of him, but that knowledge did not compel them. Amen? What compels us? The love of Christ. So only by actually having a relationship with Jesus can we be prepared. Only by actually getting to know him day by day and having a renewed relationship can we be prepared. Amen? And having a knowledge of, of, my, of Jesus will not help you. Everybody knows Jesus. Everybody has heard of Christians. Everybody has heard of the Trinity. But that will not prepare you. Amen? Point number three. The key to preparedness and the key to a lasting relationship is it being renewed every day, looking forward to the next day. So in your walk with Christ, not only should you ask him to prepare you, but look forward to the next day. Amen? Look forward to every new day with him because... The key to preparedness is preparing. And each day he's preparing you, but you're looking forward to the next day when he'll prepare you some more. Amen? So I want to close with a story. A story tells of a murderer who killed a very high official in his blind fury. He was caught, put in jail, and because his family had some money, he was later released on bail. He knew he couldn't enjoy his temporary freedom. So, with his looming court date, he saw only one option to try to influence the judge in some way, okay? And the judge had a son. So, he started developing his relationship with the judge's son. He took the judge's son to um, about three times a week. He took him out to the carnival. He took him out to... Circuses, ice cream, bouncy houses, Chuck E. Cheese's, wherever the little boy wanted to go, he took him. And he invested a lot of his time and his money in this little boy because he knew if he was locked up for the rest of his life, it wouldn't matter what his finances were anyway. Okay? And as the court date loomed, he almost became frantic, spending 
every day with this little boy, trying to convince the boy of his goodness. Finally, the day came, and the murderer, who deserved the death penalty, stood before the judge, scared but trusting in one thing, his relationship with the little boy. And when the time came for the witnesses to come forward, the judge called his son and he said, son, what can you tell me about this murder? He killed a very high official, the governor of our state, for no reason at all. What do you possibly have to tell me? And he said, daddy, I know my friend did a very bad thing, but I spent time with him and he's changed. In fact, daddy, he's even more like me than the person that he used to be, which was a murderer. Be nice to him, daddy. And that son's name was Jesus. The murderer was granted full pardon and he was allowed to live the life that he deserved or more so he didn't deserve. The key to preparedness is Jesus and only our relationship with him is what qualifies us to be prepared.